forget, O Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, <laughs> but spare us, O Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and most merciful Saviour, thou most worthy... Oh, I wish they'd get a move on. There, Mark. There, there, Lord. If they don't tore up, we'll miss bloody football results. <laughs> football results? Honestly, Mark, fancy thinking about football results when they're laying your poor dead wife to rest beneath the sod. She'd give you a shuriken of your life if she could hear you. What are you thinking of, Lord? <laughs> Memories. No, I was just thinking what a champion crop of onions you could grow. This is all. <laughs> Come on, then, Lord. Pay your respects to three great aunts. Thank them for coming all the way from Glossop. Ask them when they're going home. <laughs> <coughs> Ta, very much for coming. Yeah. I like your scent. Is it all made? <laughs> Did you enjoy it, funeral? I've seen better. Oh? They laid her out. Me and Mrs. Warrender from Dog Meat Shop. Didn't she look nice? Didn't she look restful? I thought she looked very smug. Smug, Auntie Mona. Smug. Be right, she should have looked contrite. She had no business falling off of that trolley bus. If she hadn't been killed, it could have been fatal. <laughs> I thought you looked very apropos. What's that, Maud? Well, I thought you looked very apropos lying there in her new pinny and her gardening boots. <laughs> but she'd had a lovely hairdo, hadn't she? There wasn't a curler in sight. Acted that. She'd come round special from Mason Enid's. She gave us 10p in pound discount and a free bottle of shampoo. Pat? Who's Pat? Carter's fiancé. Haven't you been introduced? No, we have not. Oh, I'm sorry, Auntie Mona. Come on, Carter. Dear stuff. Aye. Uh, well. Hmm. This is Pat. <laughs> She's going to be my fiance when we get engaged. Pleased to meet you. Isn't the price of sprouts outrageous? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you haven't got a big bust under that frock, young woman. Pardon? I can't bad young women be big busts. No, I don't know. They, they can come in quite happy, you know. <laughs> well, then the way you are. Show a sense of bereavement, will you? Let's have a look of inconsolable loss on your face. Thank you. About time. Now then, Auntie Mona, you were saying? I was saying that in my day, young women didn't have big busts. Oh, didn't they? What did they have then? Modesty. They waited till they was married before they had big busts and things like that. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think you need worry about a big bust with Pat, Auntie Mona. Anyway, our cart has got it all well in hand. Now then, Auntie Mona. <laughs> Dig in, go on. Stop! Aren't we forgetting something? Grace! On your hand legs, you. Come on, do your stuff. <laughs> and let's have a look at reverence on your face. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 dear God, um, uh, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking... Oh, sit <laughs> down, man. <laughs> now then, hands together, eyes closed. Dear Heavenly Father, Having recently completed the last rites of our Edna, what fell off a trolley bus through sheer carelessness, <laughs> we sit down together in thy presence at this table, groaning with the repast thou hast in thy munificence provided. And we thank thee, Lord, for thine individual trifles and thy fine chopped piccalilli. <laughs> Where do you get that piccalilli from, Annie? Golfers in Arkansas, 35p, special offer. You was robbed. <laughs> we thank thee, Lord, too, for the blessing of good health, recently diseased accepted. 
and we pray that in thine infinite wisdom and mercy, the pork pies will be fresher than they was at Cousin Winnie's funeral last Whitsuntide. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on then, Stavely, put that paper down. It's rude to read at meal times. It arms your spine. Pardon? I don't know what you find to read in the paper. All you get in the paper these days is bad news and ground results. There's a very interesting piece here. Pardon? Where? In the first marriages and deaths. First Pardon? marriages <laughs> and deaths. Eee, there's music in them words, isn't there? What's it say? It says here that Moss wife has snuffed it. <laughs> Nobody told me out about it. Pardon? Are you sure they feed him proper at that old folks or manny? Does he get enough roughage? That's what I wonder, Auntie. They give him too much of this newfangled treatment these days. All this talk about euthanasia. That's no good for him. It's too old for euthanasia. <laughs> you haven't got the constitution for it, have you, Stavely? Pardon? Why wasn't I told about Mort's missus? Pardon? Oh, tell him, Carter. Put him in the picture. Well, uh, Auntie Edna fell off a trolley bus. At a request stop. <laughs> she landed on her head. It was just outside the county cricket ground. During the tea interval, they'd only scored 1-6-1 one, one for three. So we took her to hospital, but unfortunately, it didn't do her no good. So we had to give her a funeral instead. Oh, I see. Pardon? Well, who's Auntie Adna then? Pardon? My missus. Oh, oh, I see. Been took badly then. <laughs> Pardon? No, uh, give her my kind regard when next you see her, will you? <laughs> Pardon? It's a sin and a shame the way they treat him in that to him. Look at the state of him. Old army great coat and Mickey Mouse braces. <laughs> and what have you got in that box? You're not still carrying your gas mask round with you, are you? <laughs> I bet they've never even bothered to tell him that war's over. Hey, listen to me, Stavely. Hitler's capitulated. There's no need to carry your gas mask round in that box. Pardon? This isn't my gas mask. Pardon? This is Corporal Parkinson. Pardon? Who? Oh? Corporal Parkinson. Pardon? He's an old soldier. Pardon? These are his ashes. <laughs> Pardon? His ashes? Yeah, I, I carry them about with me wherever I go. It was my oppo, Corporal Parkinson. Pardon? Oh, I see. Well, um... Keep him away from pork pies, will you, Stavely? <laughs> I think he could be something of hell hazard in that state. <coughs> now then, Auntie Mona, you've not finished eating already, have you? Yes. It's uh, time for our song. Song? At functions involving members of the family, we always give a song. Don't you remember what we sang at your wedding to Edna? No. Abide with me. Oh, aye. Uh, it, it was just like cup final. <laughs> we even had a bit of hooliganism at reception and all. <laughs> and Annie, don't you remember what we sang at your wedding to Les 25 years ago? Oh, I do, Auntie Mona. I do, I do. It was lovely. For those in Paris <laughs> on the sea. Yes, well, that's what we'll sing now. Most appropriate considering. Considering what? Considering your Edna's journey into the great unknown. Across the river and into death's dark veil. Across the mountains and into the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, hold on, hold on. It's not charge at light brigade she's in. She, <laughs> she's travelling individual. You make it sound like a bloody package store to Majorca. <laughs> Silence. Show a bit of respect. Ready? The note, if you please, Mary. Do. He told no father strong to save, whose arm doth bound the restless way. 
My God, oh, they've been on tonic wine again. You'll be missing on day of your own funeral, you will. And I know where I'll find you. Sitting on lavvy reading paper. Give <laughs> <laughs> over. Oh, Ooh, I do love a good funeral. It makes me feel that romantic. All oh, them pickled onions. <laughs> Just listen to them singing in front parlour. They sang that at our wedding 25 years ago. 25 years. Les. What? Would you fancy a second honeymoon? <laughs> no, thank you. Why not? No, I didn't reckon much at the first one. Why not? <laughs> Breakfast were a disgrace. Breakfast aren't the most important thing on our honeymoon. There are other considerations. Such as? Well, you know. I don't. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. Hey, Les. Do you remember first night of our honeymoon? Aye. I met Charlie Fernley just as we were crossing Mersey Bar. <laughs> they were going to watch Jeff Duke in TT races. Lucky devil. I said to him, I wish... I'm I... not talking about boat trip. I'm talking about our first night in the bedroom of the boarding house. Oh, that. <laughs> Mrs. Plimsoll was kindness itself. She was more like a mother than a landlady. <laughs> she gave us ox heart and fried onions for supper. Then she took us upstairs and showed us how to work the lavatory chain. <laughs> then she escorted us to bedroom door and she said, well then, get stuck in. <laughs> Right out loud, woman. Give it a rest, will you? There's no use skulking off. I want a definite answer from you. Do you or do you not want a second honeymoon? No. Don't prevaricate. <laughs> <laughs> it's our silver wedding this year. And on the day of the anniversary, we are going to have a service of rededication in the church where we was wed with full choir plus organ. And after that... We're going to have a pucker sit-down reception with enough room for your elbows. And after that, we're going to have a full-scale honeymoon with clean pyjamas and no holes barred. <laughs> no, what is that about? I think I'll go into funeral tea. <laughs> Sounds a damn sight more attractive than that. disgusted with you, Carter Brandon. This is the eighth time this week you've not done it. Done what? Proposed to me. Oh, that. I mean, think of all the opportunities you've had. Mm. Take Sunday night. You could easily have proposed to me while he was giving the dog a bath. Yeah. Why don't you propose to me now, love? Not at a funeral. Why not? We could make it a joint celebration. We could have our engagement party right here and now. I mean, it's a sin and shame to see all those Eccles cakes going to waste in the front parlour. And we could have your three great aunts sing us a song special. That's a very good reason for not proposing. <laughs> oh, what about tomorrow, then? I can't. I'm playing snooker. <laughs> What's the matter, Carter? Have you fallen out of love with me? No, passes the pan scrub, will ya? So... I mean, when your mother dies, and I hope it won't be from anything serious, but when she dies, Carter, oh, I'll give her a smashing funeral tea. You see, Carter, you just wouldn't be able to cope on your own if you were still a bachelor. I mean, you'd never think to cut the crusts off the sandwiches, would you? And never in a million years would you remember to order doilies for the cake stand. Doilies? You can't have a function without doilies. Everybody knows that. I bet the Queen has doilies for every meal. I bet she has them for breakfast and all. Prince Philip would do his nut if he come down and found there wasn't no doilies. Where's the bloody doilies, he'd say? <laughs> Why can't you be like Prince Philip? He proposed, and if he can propose,
propose to the Queen of England, why can't you propose to me? I've got no regal connections. You wouldn't have to troop the colour. You wouldn't have to live in Buckingham Palace. Look, everybody's getting engaged bar me. Linda Preston's just got engaged to Kent Barmer. Who's he? Oh, you know, he was had up for tampering with a level crossing. He's got them funny-shaped thumbs. His mother breeds ferrets. <laughs> Sounds quite a catch. It's a good job Prince Philip got his proposal in first. <laughs> There's no need to be sarky. I know what. What? Propose to me on Thursday. We can get the announcement in the Weekly Chronicle and Guardian if you do. Special cheap rate. How about it, love? Propose to me on Thursday. I can't. Why not? I'm playing darts. <laughs> you pig! You swine! You... You... <laughs> a second honeymoon. A service of rededication. It's a devil, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can laugh. <laughs> Tell very much. <laughs> but you're taking part in it too. What? You're giving Annie away at the church. Me? Ah, she said her dad can't do it owing to death. So you'll have to step in and fill the breach. It's true. We'll have to wear the proper clobber. Oh, ah, you'll have to wear the proper clobber, all right. It'll be a spats job, will this? Spats? Well, it's supposed to be. Women are devils for spats. It's a well-known fact of nature, is that? Women. Aye, ah, women. <coughs> Which one? Yours and mine. I'm not having you on my allotment. <laughs> Last time you set foot on my allotment, every single one of my turnips come out in gall weevil. <laughs> they were like the plague of Egypt on my artichokes. Turnips. Artichokes, why don't you grow weeds like me? Don't talk so empty. I'm not. I like weeds. I feel sorry for them. Everybody's always after the gut. Look at them all. Fumitary, shepherd's purse, speedwell silver weed, yarra. There's character in names like that. Not like sprout. Where's the romance, it's sprout? <coughs> People to know when I'm in residence. <laughs> What's Annie's game, Les? What's she up to? She says she wants to feel appreciated. She says she wants more affection shown. She says she wants to be taken out more. Who once had a sheepdog like that? <laughs> Well, when you come to think of it, you know, there's not much difference between women and sheepdogs, is there? I mean, they've both got long hair, haven't they? No, I reckon sheepdogs is more faithful. <laughs> They're easier to house strain and all. Do you know, it took Edna 15 years to learn to bring me my slippers when I come home from work. <laughs> I can only think of one advantage that women have got over sheepdogs. What's that? They don't chase motorbikes. <laughs> Your Edna didn't chase motorbikes, did she? No. No. <laughs> Shall you miss her now she's gone and she's Oh, no, I forced to. She were a dab hand at plumbing, you know. <laughs> God knows who's going to paint the outside of the house now she's gone. <laughs> Still, you've got your freedom now, haven't you, lucky devil? Freedom, aye. Freedom. You know what, Les? I'll be able to wear my cap at Sunday dinner now. <laughs> Jammy chuff. Look at me, I've got a silver wedding to contend with. 
I've got to celebrate 25 years of never-ending, ceaseless, grinding, griping, conjugal bloody bliss. Right. <laughs> conjugal bliss has got a lot to answer for the history of the world's misery. What I maintain is, marriage wouldn't be half so bad if you could keep it in family. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, I reckon no Oedipus had got right idea. He wanted to keep it in family. I'll bet he wanted to marry his mother for sole and simple reason. They were used to a cuking, and he knew she'd iron his shirts proper and not singe his singlets. <laughs> Aye, you've got something there. I mean, regardless of the fact that she's my sister, I'd have married Annie if it weren't for the way she's always humming out a tune whenever she's dusting the landing. Drives me mad, does all that humming. Precisely. And if you'd been her brother, like what I am, you'd have known all about it. You wouldn't have touched the idea of holy wedlock with a barge ball. <laughs> you know, that, that's the uh, trouble with marriage. Nine times out of ten, you find yourself marrying a total bloody stranger. <laughs> or a woman. Oh, ah, you can't keep women out on it, that's what spoils it all. Do you know why I'd have married if it hadn't been customary to marry a woman? Who? King George the Sixth. <laughs> you could have done worse for your son. <laughs> At least you'd never have gone short of a ticket for Lord's Test, would you? <laughs> Les, if I'd been available, would you have married me? <laughs> I don't know. Can you dance socks and use a dolly blue proper? No. <laughs> ah, well, sorry then. If I'd have married you, you, you'd have sent me out to work looking like a bloody rag riser. Hey, up. You two are in dead trouble. Oh, it's why? Me mother and the three great aunts are on the rampage after you. What for? To get you back to the funeral party. Oh, well. Uh, it had slipped me mind. It's funny how your wife's funeral can slip your memory like that, isn't it? <laughs> What's the mood like, Carter? They've been rabbiting. Oh, that's all right. Women are always rabbiting. The law of nature is that. Men have hairy chests and smoke pipes, women rabbit. It's, it's when they're silent, they're unpredictable and dangerous women. <laughs> now, don't let them trap you, Carter. Don't let them hem you in. Don't let them chain you up in marriage. You stand up for your freedom. Uh, look what marriage has done for us. I'm useless about that. I can't even bend the bloody fuse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they were invented. Oh, I do. What for? For the propagation of the species. Well, I never reckon much of that at the best of times. <laughs> Vastly overrated pastime. All that grunting. Aye. <laughs> Aye, but it's damn good exercise, though. <laughs> the, the pundits tell us you get more exercise out of having your bit of nuki than you would out of playing all matches with Billy. Maybe. But rugby lays a bloody sight more exciting. <laughs> more tactics to it. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. I reckon flying ointment is the human reproduction system. How do you mean? Well, I reckon we'd all be a sight better off if woman laid an egg and sat on it for nine months. <laughs> to, to act it out. That's not a bad idea. It's a cracker of an idea. Just think, she'd be stuck at house for nine months, sat on her egg. <laughs> she, 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 she'd have no excuse for coming to a pub with you then. <laughs> Aye, but she could always stick the egg into the oven for a bit, couldn't she? Well, not with gas pressure what it is these days. <laughs> oh, yeah. You couldn't rely on it. Just think what had happened. You'd put your oven on at regular two. You'd stick your egg in it. You'd nip out for a couple of jills. When you come back, you'd find gas presses gone up. Your potential son and heirs turned into a bloody omelette. <laughs> hey, shush, shush. What's that? It's singing. It's him. Onward, Christian soldiers. It's truth, they've come together. It's just like the Blitz, is this? Ah, sitting on the stairs, helpless. 
listening to the thud of the guns, the scream of the bombs, thinking to yourself, is this the end on it all? Is this the one what's going to finish off Althwaite's brewery? Now, 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 now listen, yeah. be, be, before you start getting on your eye horse, before you start spitting fire and blood... Eye horse, Les? Fire and blood? We've not come to do out like that. Oh? We've come to celebrate. Celebrate what? Well, we've seen your Edna off good and proper. We thought we might as well finish job and see you three off. See us off? What, what are you talking about? Annie told us the good news about your second honeymoon. <laughs> oh, we was pleased, Les. We was right delighted. We had one swift verse of, oh, God, our help in ages past, <laughs> followed by fight, the good fight. And then our thoughts turned to you, Mort. Oh, well, that sounds ominous. We brought you some good news. <laughs> You're not going to nip me another fair aisle jumper, are you? No, Mort, <laughs> much better news than that. You're coming to live with us. What? But I don't want... I mean, I thought... I, 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 I was looking forward to... Pardon? We couldn't bear to think of you living on your own now your Edna's gone and snuffed it. We couldn't bear to think of the loneliness you'd suffer. Having to go to the pub every night just to find company. Having to play balls just to pass the long lonely hours before sleep gives its blessed release. Going downhill, going to bed in your singlet and... Forgetting to take your laxatives every Friday night. <laughs> Welcome back to the bosom of the family, Mort. Welcome back, lad. <laughs> Ta. <laughs> Ta very much. <laughs> can, we, can we have pilchards for tea tomorrow? No, no. bring out and stop. <laughs> and as for you, Carter, well, we can't leave you out in cold, can we? Can't you? Why? Tell him, Pat. Well... When I told your mother about you not proposing, she says to me, I know what's to do with him, Pat, she says. Do you, Mrs. Brandon, I says. I do, Pat, love, she says. I do, I do. Oh, I says. Oh, what is it? I said, if it's not a rude question, I said. And it wasn't a rude question, Carter. No. No. She says, the reason you haven't proposed to me is because you're so thoughtful and considerate. Me? Just like your dad, Carter. <laughs> And do you know why your Uncle Mort took eight years to propose to your Auntie Edna? Go on, tell him, Mort. Well, uh, I said, uh, I said, uh, I, I said it wasn't fair for her to leave home till she'd finished re-slating Washhouse roof. And <laughs> <laughs> men thoughtful and considerate, just like you, Carter. You've seen how deliriously happy your dad and me are, and you think it's not fair to marry Pat unless you can repeat that. And the great happiness endured by your Uncle Mort in his marriage to Auntie Edna. Now then, go on, Carter. Do your stuff. Aye. Uh, well. Hmm. You're not thinking of re-slating your washhouse roof, are you? No. Oh. Well, I... I... Oh, Carter! What a lovely proposal! <laughs> Just like Richard Burton. I accept you, love. You've made me the happiest woman in the world. <laughs> oh, I wish you'd get your hair cut. <laughs> right, then, let's have the toast. We brought a bottle of tonic wine special and a selection of pork pies and Eccles cakes. Oh, come on, young man, do your stuff. Pass it round. Right, then, Carter. Let's get down to brass tacks. What about children? Shall we have a little boy or shall we have a colour television instead? Pardon, pardon, pardon. I've lost Copper Parkinson. <laughs> pardon. Has anyone seen my oppo? Pardon. There you are, Uncle Stavely. Oh. Corporal Parkinson, R.I.P. <laughs> oh. <laughs> pardon. <laughs> What's up then? Why all the glum faces? Not another funeral party, is it? Pardon? <laughs> Tell him, Carter. Tell him, lad. Yes, Uncle Stavely. I suppose you could say it is. <laughs> <laughs>